good morning. Welcome to Ohio Stadium. I am Tom Moore. That's Tony Gerdeman. It is uh, Ohio State Indiana week. Ohio State Indiana day even. Uh, it is, we're like three hours to kick off, a little less than three hours to kick off right now. Team is not here yet. Uh, fans are not here yet, but fans are not going to be here. This is going to be, I mean, in a year filled with very different kinds of Ohio State game atmospheres, this is going to be even more different today. I don't know how much difference it's really going to make in the big picture, but no no fans at all. Like, there is no one out there. You, you see the cardboard folks out behind us right there, like right between us there. That's it. Those are the only people who are going to be attending the game today other than a few media folks. Uh, are you anticipating that making any difference from the previous couple games? No, because I don't know how much noise the 1,300 people in the stands were making anyway, being so spread apart. It's just one more thing that the players have to deal with. And, and I don't even know at this point if if you notice it, like the straw that breaks the camel's back. I don't know if the camel notices the, the 40 straws right before that one. It's just it's just more for the load and it is already heavy. And then, you know, I, I don't even know if during the game, doesn't impact them maybe after the game when they can't see them not that they could interact but you could at least see visually see them and wave and now you can't do that and uh, so that's where the the zooms the facetimes the phone calls the text that has to take over and that has to be the the way you get your interaction with your family and uh, the the press there is uh, some new rules for us this week as well uh, prior games Ohio State was very very cool with us being down, being able to walk around double A deck before the game. Um, that was something that we did not get to do at all at Penn State. Ohio State was, was very gracious about that and let us, you know, we had much pretty good access pre-game to be able to watch warm-ups and shoot photos and that kind of stuff because of the new health uh, restrictions in place this week in Franklin County and Ohio State's uh, decisions based on that. We can't do that anymore, but uh, that was that was fantastic when we were able to do that. So that was, uh, that was a nice thing that we can't do anymore. Um, but you know, but we are here, which is nice. Um, this is this is a game that. Well, first of all, let's let's let people know who are not here. It is raining a little bit. It is sprinkling. It's not it's not raining hard. I mean, it's just kind of, it's like that light green rain on the radar where you go outside and it's like, yeah, I should wear a hat or a light raincoat kind of thing. But that's about it. Like it's not. It doesn't seem like that's something that's probably going to impact the game too much, right? Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's something that they are accustomed to dealing dealing with. It's not a driving rain. It's just going to be a slight annoyance all game long. And as Ryan Day loves to say, both teams are playing with it, so it's the team that handles it the best. And, and this isn't something new for either team because, Tom, how many years have they been in the Big Ten? Uh, Indiana or Ohio both State? Uh, well, Ohio State joined in 1914, I think, 1916. So, so they've more been in the than, Midwest more than 100. for a while. Yeah, Ohio State has, has rather famously been located in Ohio right. since its founding. So, Thank yes. You. Yeah, this is this is not the first weather game. And as far as uh, late November weather goes, I mean, this is this is a week like you, you see the this day in history in Ohio State football. And this is there, there's an awful lot of Michigan games being played this week in history. And you know, you think of those, and it's like 40 degrees and a slate gray sky. And today is like 60 uh, ish degrees and a slate gray sky and a little rain. This is this is really not bad for this time of year. No, I agree. It's it could be much worse. I've been to games that are worse. I, you know, like uh, the 95 Michigan game where it was too cold to get our hibachi even going. <laughs> Couldn't even start a fire. Uh, yeah, it's this isn't this isn't that bad. As I say that up in the press box, knowing that I'm not going to be sitting out in the rain for four hours. <laughs> not, not the worst thing in the world, I guess. Uh, I guess the, the, the next question is Ohio State is going to be, I think, both, the, both these teams are probably more reliant on the pass than the run to move the ball. Ohio State probably has a little bit better of a run game than Indiana. Indiana is just has been non-existent. Michael Penix has not run the ball at all this week, or this season. Uh, Stevie Scott and uh, Samson James, both three-something yards per carry. Like, there's just, there's no run game there for Indiana. Ohio State has not been great, but it's, you know, this is this is Ohio State's rich person problems that we've talked about that, you know, well, the Ohio State run game could be better. Like, well, the Ohio State run game could be worse, and then it would be Indiana's. So, and the Ohio State pass game is probably better than Indiana's. Well, I say probably, and I'm being very kind. Um, you know, this is this is one of these things. Like you know, as you said, Brian Day says that you have to you just have to deal with it better than your opponent does. Ohio State seems like they are set up to deal with it better than Indiana is. I don't know that this changes. Do you think this changes either game plan? Because 
they both do what they do well, and they, people will tell you the receivers have the advantage in, run, in, in rain games. I do wonder, Tom, if Indiana outrushes Ohio State, what does that mean for the game? I don't know that it means anything. I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that Indiana will outrush Ohio State, especially on a yards per play basis. As well, I say especially on a yards per play basis, also on a total yardage basis. I think that's, I think it's extraordinarily unlikely. I, I guess that's bad for Ohio State if it happens, I guess. But, uh, I mean, I think the, ter the question that I, I look at this today is turnover margin. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's always kind of a good one. And that's, you know, when you're putting together the uh, – Pre, you know, pre-game keys to the game for the network broadcast, like win the turnover bottle. That's always kind of a brainless one to put on there. But if Ohio State doesn't turn the ball over, Indiana has lived and died with turnovers on defense. They've, they've had, I think, 10 interceptions this year, set up a lot of short fields for their offense. If they can't do that, first of all, Ohio State's probably scoring points. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it's much harder for Indiana to score points if they have to drive 75 yards down the field rather than getting set up for a 20-yard touchdown drive. I mean, if Ohio State doesn't turn the ball over today, I don't see any possible way they lose. Yeah, and I, I think uh, the stat I used on Buckeye Weekly this week was that of Indiana's 16 touchdown drives, six have come off, six have been 50 yards or less following a turnover. And if Ohio State makes Indiana drive 75, 80 yards, you, that, that's a lot of execution that Indiana has to do that they've not been accustomed to doing over the course of a game. When you've got at least two interceptions in every game, that's that's more than you should expect, and, and they're taking advantage of those interceptions. But these are some really, really bad quarterbacks they've played, and they're not playing a bad quarterback today. I'm not saying Justin Fields isn't going to have two <laughs> interceptions, but I'm saying if he does have two interceptions, he still might have another 350, 350 yards and five touchdown passes on top of it. So. If Indiana gets them, that doesn't mean that uh, he's not going to get them a few more times than they get him. But those, uh, they've been very, uh, they create turnovers, they create the interceptions. It's not just bad quarterbacking, but bad quarterbacking sure has helped them. Well, and you look at the interceptions they had. Look, but look back at that Michigan game. I would guess that most Ohio State fans probably watched that Michigan game three or four times. There was, there was, at least, <laughs> dim the lights a little, light some candles, <laughs> turn, turn on the. Honey, Ohio, the, the game's on. <laughs> Um, that that was that was a game where there, there was there was at least one interception in that game that was like okay that was a that was a good play and then there was one at least one in that game that was just Joe Milton going wow that Indiana defensive back is wide open there's not a player within ten yards of him he's a great person to throw to and he did and the guy caught it and, and that's it so uh, we're gonna get we're getting some questions right now in the chat if you guys have questions please leave them in that chat and we will answer those in just a little bit um, but I mean Justin Fields I mean. You talked about Indiana getting two turn two turn interceptions potentially today. Uh, Justin Fields, in his entire college career, including that sort of short season at Georgia, three interceptions total, and two of them were in that Clemson game. And one of the, at least one of those was, you know, has been determined to not be his fault at all. So, you know, basically two interceptions that are plausibly kind of on Justin Fields in his entire career. If Indiana gets two interceptions today, that's like a wow. That that you know, and, and then maybe you do have something crazy going on where, where you get a weird result but it just that that doesn't seem real likely to me and, and I just outside of that or outside of you know maybe we, we've talked all week about the crazy blitzing that, that they do and bringing guys from all different weird angles and maybe they confuse that young you know Harry Miller and, and some of the offensive line so maybe you get a blindside hit that knocks the ball free you get a turnover that way but you know unless Indiana's plus two in turnovers I don't I don't think there's a chance that they that they win this game yeah and, and it almost feels like it would be plus two just to lose by seven or something like that and you know they're gonna attack Harry Miller it'll be interesting to see how he answers that bell and, and really how much help do they give him I still think Josh Myers has been affected by kind of how much Harry is being attacked and struggling and so that then when you're trying to do two jobs, you're not doing your job. And so that's something to keep an eye on in this one. Indiana, you know, they, they, they rush the passer from every level. And the, the secondary has as many sacks as the defensive line. The linebackers have as many sacks as the secondary. So there's not like, there's, first, there's no Chase Young. Okay? There's, no, there's no Tyreek Smith either. You know, and, and it's just a bunch of different guys coming from different places that uh, Justin Fields has been pretty good at picking those things up and you know, 
uh, Master Teague and Trey Sermon will have to be good at picking those things up and the hot receivers will have to make, you know, am I the guy? You know, is, is my guy blitzing? Am I the hot receiver? There's just a lot of little things that are happening after the fact, like uh, in the split decisions that change the play that is called. And then you have to uh, be able to react to what Indiana is doing properly. And if you do, then the change will move and Indiana will try some new things. Eventually they'll see that maybe this isn't working and now what do we do? And that's when maybe they get a little too daring and give up something big because they're trying to make something happen, which we've seen uh, so far this season. Right, and, and that's something that they've talked about. I mean, Josh Meyer talked this week a little bit about the fact that God, teams are doing stuff that is unsound, like that you look at you look at what they're doing and you're going, that doesn't make any sense. And it's just, you have to do something crazy to try and stop this Ohio State offense because this Ohio State offense is just, it's too good for the talent that they're facing right now. So you've got to do stuff that's a little bit crazy because if you do the stuff that people are expecting, then that can be that can be counteracted and stopped. So you have to do stuff that's like, well, no one's crazy enough to do this, and then they do it, and then you have to deal with that. So it, Josh Myers did sound a little annoyed by that earlier this yes. week. That, that it's like, don't do that. That's stupid. What are you doing? So, but but you know, Indiana is. You know, last year, Josh, uh, Jeff Halfley always talked to us about the fact that the number one job was don't give up big plays. And that is very much Indiana's Indiana's MO on defense is, you know, Ohio State spends a lot of time in that one high defense. Indiana is too high. And they have, you know, they've, they've got a couple guys back there. And the whole thing is don't, don't let them get a big play. Don't let the opponent get a big play. Try and make them move down the field, get five first downs or something to, to score a touchdown. Because they think, you know, hey, if you get, you know, you, you blitz the field, the boundary corner, uh, and you get one, you know, you get a stop, you get some, get them behind the chains, it's hard, you know, if, if you get behind the chains once or twice in a drive, it's hard to keep picking those first downs up. So just get, you know, get that opponent off the field or create a turnover. I, I don't know if that works at Ohio State because there's just, you know, if they're blitzing guys and you, you get Garrett Wilson in space, or you get Chris Olave in space, or you get Jameson Williams, or Jackson for the Jigbo, or, you know, you're familiar with Ohio State skill talent if you're watching this. If you get those guys in space, it's not that hard for them to make one guy miss. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there are teams that have possession receivers, and you know, I think you saw this with with Ohio State last year, you know, the Austin Mack, Ben Victor type receivers, you know, they'll get those 15 yards, and that's it. Ohio State has enough guys this year that you get that 15 yards, you make that one guy miss, and then all of a sudden it's a big play, and that's that's what Indiana can't have today. Yeah, you also have a guy, Justin Fields, who, okay, you, you want to play too deep. He can still beat that safety in that corner with his arm. And we saw it a couple weeks ago, Chris Olave with that catch, in the, in the, I think the second touchdown catch, the 49-yarder, where it's just placed perfectly before the safety can get there. And uh, so, yeah, you can try to limit Ohio State's big plays, but first, you know, there's the whole covering the corner or covering the receivers, the very good receivers aspect. Then it's trying to beat the football to where it's going to be landing. And, and we know Justin Fields has the ability to throw with great touch. He also has a big-time arm that can just get the ball there before the safeties. And, and so... Uh, we'll, we'll see how he does there, what, whether the weather impacts that at all. I, I just, I think the impact would be more on catching the ball than throwing or anything else. And if you do see some interceptions, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one that just goes off of somebody's hands over the middle. You know, on, on yeah. one of these quick passes, goes off of, I don't know, Luke Farrell. Sorry, Luke. And, and just, you know, <laughs> pops up and, and lands in the, the arms of a safety behind him, something like that, where kind of flukish, but that's that's what uh, the weather may bring about today. Well, and I mean, one thing that is an indication that it might not affect the passing too much, it, it's not windy at all. I mean, there's, there's some rain, but I mean, look, right right there, you see the flag, it's just kind of laying there, just on the on the flagpole, not moving. And I don't think there's, it's just, yeah, the flags on the goalposts are not moving either. So there's just, there's no real wind today. So you don't, and, and even if there's a little wind, like Justin Fields can drive, this is not the JT Barrett era, Justin Fields can drive oh, easy. <laughs> Justin. Justin Fields is a stronger JT Barrett. Ooh, ooh, I don't, ooh, I don't, hottest, I don't hottest know. take in the history of uh, Buckeye Scoop, maybe. Um, but yeah, this is this is not a day that should impact the uh, the uh, arm, you know quarterback throwing too much. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I'm interested to see what this Ohio State pass defense looks like against Indiana because 
Indiana is probably going to be fairly one-dimensional. I mean, if, they, if they're going to run the ball, I mean, we had talked to Ross Fulton on the morning scoop this week. He thought, you know, maybe, maybe this is the week that Michael Penix has to run the ball in order to have Indiana have some kind of a ground game because Stevie Scott and Samson James just aren't. And that's, part of that is on the offensive line as well, that their offensive line is not fair. Fantastic, but they may have to do something with Michael Penix in the ground game in order to move both at all on the ground. But in the air, that's that's kind of the question for Ohio State's defense right now. It feels like the linebacker play is pretty solid. I think everyone's pretty confident in the linebackers. Everyone's pretty confident in the defensive line right now. That defensive backfield, though, is a question mark. And this is not necessarily a team where they're going to, you know, Indiana can really push them. But Indiana has some decent skill talent. This is. You know, I mean, you saw Jahan Dotson do make some plays for Penn State. Indiana has has some guys. Well, Phil Yurkin some plays in the slot. That's potentially a matchup issue for Ohio State, for Marcus Williamson or Josh Proctor or whoever they have on him at that point. You've got those guys outside. You've got you've got a uh, pretty good tight end. You've got uh, you know Peyton Hendershot, the tight end. You've got uh, uh, they've all got great names. You got the uh, <laughs> the wide receivers. Um, but I mean, you've got you've got uh, you've got enough skilled talent that I'm curious what this Ohio State defense looks like because I don't know that Ohio State's defense could prove to me today that they're going to be great and that they've kind of got their issues solved but I do wonder you know if if it looks bad today or if it looks a little ragged today on the defensive backfield I'm gonna like I, I think that becomes like officially or a, officially a concern if if Indiana can move the ball through the air a decent amount today I think you see if Indiana, if Michael Penix is just going to kind of throw the ball up and let his receivers beat, try to beat Ohio State's defensive backs. And kind of what, the 2017 season or 2018 season? Yeah. Where uh, you just throw it up and, and see what happens. And Indiana goes on and throws for 400 yards. I don't know if that's going to happen here today, but we saw Indiana do the same thing against Michigan. What Ohio State would uh, be – smart to do is not jump off sides and give up free plays like Michigan did I think in four four times in that game stay disciplined and don't just give up free plays and, and, but yeah if, if Ohio State's corners, safeties, whatever struggle with those 50-50s or maybe they're not even close enough to be 50s I, would not get, I kind of view this offense a little bit like Penn State's can't run maybe, maybe the quarterback runs a little bit and when we thought that about Sean Clifford, Ohio State did as well, and they shot him down. I I still think that Penix has to do a little bit of running, unless the secondary is just toast and, and it doesn't matter, Yeah. which I'm not ready to go there yet, but it sure would have been nice to see this secondary against Maryland last week to get just another game of work, and you'd feel a lot better or maybe a lot, more, <laughs> a lot worse. Yeah, you'd feel a lot more informed, certainly, yes. if, if you had that Talia Tangabaloa, you know, or, or Kim Jarrett, uh, like that That whole year. That was something that was really, that was maybe the thing I was most interested to see last week was how does this secondary hold up against that? Because that, that probably would have been the best passing attack they faced during the regular season this, this year, probably. I just and wonder it, if yeah. Indiana has any respect for the Ohio State secondary. I mean, they have to have respect for the secondary, but I don't, you know, I think that, I, I think you can have respect for it and still view it as the most vulnerable point on the Ohio State defense, yes. and I think, I think probably Indiana views it like that, I think we view it like that, I think the Ohio State coaching staff views it like that, I mean, that is, that is the lingering question right now, is that Ohio State secondary can, you know, without, without uh, Cameron Brown, all of a sudden you're a little thin at the corner spot, you've got Seven Banks and Sean Wade, and they've both been you know, fine this year, but they, there has not been. It, you have not had the corner so far this year who's like, aha, this is the guy who's going to go in the top ten. Like Sean Wade was talked about like that all year. He hasn't looked like that this year the whole time, and that's that's a little bit of a concern because you, you need you need that guy. You don't need him today. You don't probably need him in the next three weeks after this, but you're going to need him. January first, or, or whenever, whenever they're playing someone who's uh, a little more explosive than uh, Illinois or Michigan State or Michigan, so that's that's uh, that's got concern for Ohio State. And you got you got some concerns at the safety spot too. Marcus Hooker has been, you know, he has missed some tackles. They've had they have they have had some plays that were, you know, the, the Jordan Fuller specials where the uh, eight yard pass turns into an eight yard gain. You have not had you have you've had some eight yard passes that turned into thirty yard gains and forty yard gains this year. 
that they, you know, again, you can probably get away with that right now, but that that becomes a, a warning sign. That becomes a big red flag for later in the year. I mean, the goal the goals for this Ohio State team is not beat Indiana. The goal for this Ohio State team is a lot bigger than that. In order for them to get to that goal, I I. Uh, I have I have concern about this Ohio State secondary whether they will let them get to that goal. I'm with you. Do we want to get to questions? Let's get to questions. And if you do have questions, feel free to leave those in the comments for us. Let's see. All right. We were going to scroll right through. Uh, James says, uh, when there was a big stop or a pivotal moment in the game, Urban Meyer would do a knockout punch type motion on the sideline. Is it possible for, for uh, Ryan Day? to do a uh, DX style celebration <laughs> on the sidelines. Uh, I'm going to guess that would probably be 15 yards. That's, uh, I think a lot of, I can remember doing that field and that's, that's been a little I while. I wouldn't mind like a karate kick, you know, <laughs> like, take it back to the 80s. Sweep the leg, Brian yes. Day, sweep the leg. Jordan asks about uh, uh, Marcus Crowley, Wazos playing today. Was Crowley on the injury report? No, he was not, he's he good not, to go. Yeah, he's good, okay, he's good to How go. How much, I, I, I would only expect yeah. Crowley to go when the game is over. Like, I don't know that he's going to be in the mix while the game is still in doubt. I think they'll just go with Teague and Sermon. But it's good to have him back and have that as an option in another week yeah. of practice. Maybe maybe you can put him in when the game is still in doubt. At least, at least that's my thinking. Maybe he will play in, in the first or second quarter, but I, I, yeah. I doubt it. I, I think there's a possibility that he ends up the best running back on this team, but I think they're going to want to ease him into things a little bit. There's... You know, I think there was uh, Steel Chambers has flashed that, you know, he may have the ability to be that type of back, but he's had some trouble hanging on the ball. So, he, you know, he's not going to get that opportunity. Uh, Crowley, yeah, I mean, Crowley is, if, if he goes, I expect they sort of ramp him up into it. But I, I would I would expect to see him get some carries today, but not necessarily uh, first quarter kind of carries. That is Cavazos. Uh, good to have him back. I don't know how much he's going to play, but if things aren't going well, you got to try somebody. Yep. Uh, Jay says it's going to be a rainy day. Have to hold on to the football. Not going to be a great throwing day, so it may be really choppy. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is uh, definitely a concern. That uh, it, I mean, it, it's it's probably going to be a little ragged. I mean, everything's been a little ragged this year. Uh, I can sell you. Speak says, for yourself. <laughs> I can sell you. Says we need nothing more than real game reps. And yeah, I mean that that's a thing. Like this is. This is a team that <coughs> right now has the number amount of reps that they would have after the non-conference schedule. So you think about where this team would be during a normal season. Like this is this is when you're going into your Big Ten opener. This is how many game reps they have, and it is practically Thanksgiving. So yeah, I mean that that and that's a concern. I think that has to be a real concern. Ryan Day was asked about that. You know, does are you worried that the teams that are getting 11 games in in the regular season? are going to be ahead of, you know, we'll, we'll have more experience, be a little ahead of where you are after seven or eight games, depending on how many they get in uh, through the Big Ten Championship game, depending on, you know, who else, who else pulls a Maryland or a Florida State or, or whatever else. So, uh, and, and I think that is a concern. There's, there's a certain point where you've, you've got enough that you're okay, but, and, and you know, maybe there, there's a certain advantage where you, you have less opportunities to get guys hurt, but... That, that does have to be a concern, and that's, that is absolutely the most valuable resource they have today is game reps to get get existing guy, you know existing starters ready and, and up to speed and uh, some of the younger guys the opportunity to start getting to that. Say September is for pretenders, November is for contenders. It's November, but Ohio State is still in September, and, and they're not even getting October, and they're going to go straight to December, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what December is for or January, but uh, Trestle needs to come up with a new saying for a pandemic. Uh, Henry California, Henry California says Penix will not hit those 50 feet. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if he doesn't, that's a good sign for Ohio State secondary. Richard says, due to depth, would man or zone be better for Ohio State? Well, these aren't, they didn't come here to play zone, you know, and, and I don't know that corners are the problem, the, the big problem. It's, it's after the catch as well. And, they, they'll do some zone, as, as Combs just said. They'll change some things up. 
I just wonder if you get to the point where you're doing too many different things rather than excelling or trying to excel at one or two things. Uh, Three Bucks says, too bad this game isn't in Indiana just to experience normal traffic for once. Yeah, it is uh, a delight. <laughs> it is a delight to come in, uh, a delight to come in and, and sail sail right in and with no no issues. Those two at State, too. We went from uh, our hotel, which was in State College, which is bizarre enough, uh, and drove to Penn State and were there at the stadium in seven minutes. And it's like, this is not normal. Yeah. Normally, normally even, even in the best of circumstances, you're sitting in traffic for 45 minutes trying to get into Penn State or Indiana. Plus, I don't know if people realize that when, when we go to Penn State games, we are staying like an hour and a half, two hours away because that's the closest you can get to a hotel in Pennsylvania, in, in Penn State, because... It's too country. As Terrell Pryor said, it's just too country. There's, there's nothing out there. Yeah, Buzz asks us to take off our masks, and if we do that, we will be kicked out of the press box. So, nope, can't do that. Sorry. that's The rules are the rules. Uh, Richard says, 19 practices for everything game played. I mean, that, that, is, that is weird. It was What was the stat this week? 54, 57, 57 practices. practices and three games played. That is... I mean, this is real weird. Jordan says, "Can you tell Bill Landis I'm sorry for using his picture on Twitter?" Uh, that <laughs> yes. is, did you see that picture? Yes, I did. It was it. It was an no absolute need to delight. Apologize. Yeah, no, that's he, he did that. He did that to himself. Uh, Brad <laughs> says, "Watching from Florida." Hello, Brad. Glad you could join us from Florida. If you guys have any more questions, I think we are through our questions. So if you have any more questions, feel free to ask those in the in that chat function. Um, I, I mean. I, I think we ended up picking virtually the same score for this game. I had 42-21. You had 42-20. Have you had any second thoughts, or is that kind of how you see this playing out today? Uh, I'm, I'm still good there. Did you see the staff picks where I think three of you or four of you picked 42-21? Yeah, that's – that's. I mean, I think that's about right. I mean, that's – we. the last time we had a whole group of us right around the uh, – right around a certain score it was penn state and we were all within like three points of the final score so every once in a while i feel like we know what we're talking about that's uh that's not a bad thing we had a couple more come in just a second ago uh brad, uh, brad says he thinks sermon gets a touchdown today because how they he's, blitz he's uh, due yeah he thinks he thinks they get one in the passing game yeah uh, that, that's entirely possible. It's just a little, a little dump. Uh, I think little it's about off. time they get him involved in that passing game. I keep waiting for it. Yeah. Yeah. Lou, Lou says, have the Buckeyes been practicing for a rain game? I don't know if that, I mean, I don't know if that's been a specific thing. This has been like in the forecast this week. That was a possibility. When they do, they, uh, when they do, the way they do it is they dip footballs in water and uh, then we'll throw those and run those. And, you know, obviously that's a lot wetter than game balls are going to get. But, you know, that's, that's one of those. Uh, if you can do this, if you can, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. If you can, if you can uh, carry a ball that's been dipped in water or thrown in water, you know, throw a ball that's been dipped in water, you can definitely do one that's a little, a little wet from sprinkles. I, I'm not anticipating the, the weather. Could you do uh, the like the anti-fire sprinkler system in the woody on the practice field? Although <laughs> I don't know that that's water. That might be some like oxygen yeah, present, which yeah. would not be good. Well, and I'm guessing they're practicing outside for the most part anyway, so that they're, they're uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be. Uh, I don't think there's a huge concern. Uh, I don't think it's a huge concern. So, um, how fast does the turf look today? I think pretty much exactly as fast as normal. I think I don't. I don't think there's a huge. Uh, you know, if anything, it's maybe a little slick from the rain, and that maybe helps the uh, wide receivers a little bit. They have let it grow a little bit, though. <laughs> Treebox says, "How much has Justin run today? Will it be right from the start?" What do you think? I, I wonder if he's going to run a little bit more just to get things going, like the Nebraska thing. But. Um, it wouldn't surprise me because this is one of those games you have to win, obviously, and this is the biggest game so far. And it seems like time in the big games, that's when the quarterback runs the ball. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think we expected that at Penn State, and it turns out Penn State wasn't a big game. Right, Ryan Day figured that out. We did. Uh, Buzz mentions the uh, Michigan State game from 2015 when, when uh, Ohio State lost. I mean, that was... It was a very, very different yeah, today. Was that was that was uh, cold, windy. Cold, yeah. That was probably I think that was snowing that game. So it's probably 30 degrees, 20, 30 degrees colder. Much more wind. Again, like the, right there, the flag it is laying there. It's not, it's not doing anything. That so was miserable. That weather. that was, that was a. Uh, I remember being. I remember that day, and that was that was a, yeah one of the more miserable games. This is like. This is this is like a uh, late September yeah. day, basically. Like, yeah, it's raining a little bit, but it's, you know, this is this is not cold. this is not Big Ten weather. This is like this is weather that SEC teams would complain about having to play at in Kentucky or something like that. Like, this is Florida State may cancel this game altogether. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is fine. Uh, th yeah, not a, not a big deal. Uh, Richard says, "Well, the Indiana defense encouraged slant patterns. I mean." They, you're gonna do if they're blitzing off the corner, like you're, you're gonna do something to just hit those. You know, 
you're, you're potentially looking at hot routes at that point. And yeah, I mean, that, like the, those slants and that kind of stuff, like that's a real easy, good, good uh, hot route. Yeah, and, and whatever it takes, they'll have it designed and then the, it's just about execution. And uh, Buzz says, oh, she won't have the ball for long, we'll score quickly. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of what Indiana tries not to let you do. They try and make you drive down the field. So, you know, if Ohio State is scored quickly, that is a very, 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 very good sign. Because I don't think that there's a, uh, I don't think that there's a, uh, a way that Indiana gets to 30 points today. You know, I mean, if Indiana right. gets to 30 points, unless, the, unless there's like multiple turnovers and they're getting short fields, I, I don't think they, I don't think they get to 30 points. So if Ohio State scored quickly, if Ohio State has, you know, 21 points at halftime and doesn't completely take their foot off the gas, which I don't think they will, based on how Ryan Day has talked about Indiana. You know, I think they're, I think they're fine. If they, if they, if they score 40 points, I don't see any possible way Ohio State loses to them. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah. Indiana just doesn't have the offense to do that. And I know everybody loves their offense, but it's been uh, the beneficiary of some just an easy, 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 easy schedule so far. Uh, now, um, yeah. Henry California, Henry California says, do you expect Fields to keep the ball on a higher percentage today on the read option? I, I think that's, I mean, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but yeah, I think if you're going to do it, like this is the game to do it, to at least, at least kind of give Indiana something to think about. Uh, Brad says he's not hating on our top recruiting quarterback, but watching his highlights last night, Strahd Miller looked better. I mean, I, I'm assuming you're talking about Quinn Ewers, and Quinn Ewers has another two years before yeah. he's at Ohio State, so he's got he's got some time to develop. Well, and when Mark Gibbler starts talking about him in terms of he has what Trevor Lawrence has, I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. Mark Mark is getting hyperbolic, and Mike, Mark does not usually get hyperbolic, so that's uh, that, that should tell you something. Uh, Demand says the loss was a play calling issue. If he remembers right, the 2015 uh, Ohio State Michigan State game. Yes, you remember correctly. I will not stand for any Ed Warren or slander on this show. <laughs> why, why not? By the way, Tom, Indiana has given up two plays of 40 yards this season. From yeah, Sandwich. I mean, that's that's the thing. I, I don't – that that's gonna, if, if Ohio State's hitting big plays, it's going to be a huge day for Ohio State. I don't know that I would rely on that. I think I think you're going to see more kind of eight-play touchdown drives than two-play touchdown drives. Diego says, the weather doesn't concern me. New coach, Urban seemed to hate throwing in rain. He doesn't think Day has that issue. Well, and, and Urban has Urban had a quarterback who is not as good at throwing in the rain or the wind or 80 degrees and sunny than, than uh, Ryan Day Indoors. Indoors. Indoors, yes, yes. Uh, Jordan says, with the level the team is playing on offense, how much harder is it getting for us to compare them to teams in the past, and why do we could try to compare everything? I mean, that's, that's a... Uh, Where would you put this question in comparison to other questions? Now, I, I think this offense is up there with the best at any point in Ohio State's history, right? I mean, I think I think the question is the defense, and this this team will, with with the way the modern game is, and, and the playoff works shakes out, and the types of teams you're facing in the playoff, you're not going to win the you know 17 to 17 going into overtime game against Miami like that's not you, you're not going to see a 17 to 17 national championship game after regulation ever you know n not ever again but not for a while I, I think you're going to see 38 to 38 or 42 to 42 or you know that that's that's just where the game is right now and Ohio State has the offense to win the national championship they have the quarterback they need to win the national championship it's just a matter of can, what, can the defense do just enough? The defenses have to do a lot, but they need just enough. I kind of feel the same way about the running game. Just needs to do enough. Yeah. All the time, I will say, Chip Tressel had a thousand-yard receiver as head coach at Ohio State. Ryan Day has not. So mm, there you go. Settle well, down with your uh, passing game <laughs> head coach comparisons. Yes. Uh, Garrett Wilson, three straight 100-yard games. Only uh, He's only the fourth player in Ohio State history to have three straight 100-yard games. The other three, uh, you may have heard of them, Chris Carter, Terry Glenn, David Boston. That's not terrible company. Uh, Buzz has much more passing offense than in the olden days of 8-6 to six final score games, yes. And uh, I can't remember too many 8-6 to six Ohio State games. I remember the 6-4 to four Penn State-Iowa game. That was a doozy. Um, King Cuber says the only way Indiana can win is if they get a lot of turnovers for points. Yep, totally agree. Uh, Buzz says the mud game was from uh, playing Barrett instead of Jones at quarterback. 
That's, I mean, it was also the fact that Ezekiel Elliott was in the hospital that week, and then they stopped, didn't run Ezekiel Elliott, and then they had nothing else to do. And again, that 2015 team was overrated, was fat and happy, and was satisfied mm-hmm. with the championship the year before. So stop. Uh, yeah, well, I the, think people need to get over not not this particular yes, question, but yes. I think people need to remove that 2015 team from a pedestal. Yeah. It doesn't belong there. Well, and there was a great article on maybe ESPN this week about uh, like what the heck has happened to uh, Florida State since their national championship. And you read it, and it was like they talked about the uh, complacency in that 2014 team that just got murdered by yeah. Oregon in the, in the Rose Bowl. Well, all year long they were playing right. lucky to win each game. Yeah, and that was that was exactly what Ohio State was the year after that. It was You got that complacency, and it's real hard. I mean, these are 18- to 22-year-old guys, and they don't always make great choices, especially when they're not motivated. This Ohio State team is extremely motivated. Brad says, uh, Ohio State rolling today, Indiana getting blown up too much. It's, uh, it's too simple uh, to adjust their blitzing scheme, hit the open man. Yeah, I mean, if if Justin Fields can read those blitzes and the offensive line can protect him, I, I think that's probably probably true. Richard says, player of the game, Barrett Browning. Baron Browning on the blitz. That's an interesting one. Who's, who's the player of the game on defense to you? Ah, uh, that's not a bad one. Um... Pete Warner, Indiana native. Yeah, could be. Uh, yeah, Buzz says should have moved this game to Toledo, just north of the rainstorm. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's uh, I, I think this is gonna not not be a big impact today. Diego says over under the number of trick plays in the Rutgers game today. Now we're talking. Let's talk a little Rutgers Michigan. Uh, I, I worry that Rutgers has shot a lot of its uh, best best you know best bullets already, but. Um, Three and a half. Yeah, I mean that dep- depends on how you just define trick plays, but yeah, yeah. Um, Brad says, "Can we get out the guys saying we will lose?" I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone's uh, thinking Ohio State's going to lose today, but you know, I, I don't. I think the concern is not today, but uh, much later in the year in the uh, playoff, or, or you know, that's that's where that kind of comes. Uh, Pete Laws is a big challenge for the secondary. Hopefully, the D line alleviates some stress. Marcus Williamson needs a big game in slot coverage. He does. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, if Marcus Williamson has a good day, either Marcus Williamson or Josh Proctor, if they keep Wap Fillier, I mean, you had the stat this week about what Wap Fillier did against Daxton Hill for Michigan. Like, what, what was the stat? He had 11 catches, but only 79 yards. Yeah, I mean, if that, if that goes, if that, if that's what it is, that's, that they will absolutely take that. You just, you just don't want the yards after the catch. Like, you could give up seven yards in a pass. Because Indiana's not going to complete 80% of their passes. So if they run on first down for two and they complete a pass on second down and they don't complete the pass on third down, like, ta-da, you're, you're off the field. I uh, had a question on the likelihood of them going over 42 today. I mean, we both picked exactly 42 <laughs> for Ohio State, so I think that's... Well, you know what? If uh, This is one of those games where you're going to have to... I, I assume they're going to still try, be trying to score with the first-team offense in the fourth quarter. So maybe there is a field goal at the end. You know, let, let's see what uh, Jake Seibert can do. The game is, mm-hmm. it'll be 42-20 late in the fourth, as I have said. And you're like, you know what? We need to get our freshman kicker some experience. You can explain to Tom Allen afterwards why we did it, and, and we being Ryan Day, why he did it. Uh, and, and maybe maybe then you go 45. Uh, Buckeye Sloopcast, our friend Jared, says, uh, if Ohio State scores for 50-plus yards out today, who does it? I, I'm going to – I'll take Chris Olave. <laughs> I will also take Chris Olave. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'll go J- James Williams. Yeah, sure. Or, that's or, a good one. Yeah. Master Teague has a good history against Indiana as well. He rushed for 100 yards against them last year up yeah. in, over in Bloomington. So, you know, don't forget that. He's, he's, he's due for a big one. I'm going to throw out a dark horse. Marcus Crowley in the fourth quarter. Marcus Crowley in the fourth quarter from uh, 58 yards, let's say. That would create a hellstorm of uh, message board bickering, not bickering, just <laughs> conversation about, hey, maybe maybe Marcus Crowley should be starting. Um, and I don't think it would be unfounded if, in fact, Tom, that 58-yarder happens. Unless Trey Sermon and Master Teague also have 58-yarders. Exactly. Yeah. Jared says he's got fields on a run. I I mean, if Justin Fields has a 50-yard touchdown run, that's, uh, I mean. First I, one since Florida Atlantic. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, Tony didn't just change his score. Man, Tony, Tony's still saying 42-20, oh, no, right? I'm no. sticking with it. I'm yeah, a yeah, man yeah, of principles. Yeah, no. yeah I, 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 I mean, I think Justin Fields could bust a long one. If he, you know, I think you've seen that, uh, 
in the past where you know they're not keeping it, they're not keeping it, they're not keeping it, and then all of a sudden he keeps one, and the defense end crashes down, and yep. But but that's generally like a walk in from eight yards mm -hmm. out, not a. That, and that, that's a little bit of a function of where they're calling that play too. You know, may, maybe it's third and two at midfield, and then he does it, and then and then you get that fifty yarder. But that's just. I think there's a much higher chance that there's a. Uh, you know, second and goal from the eight, and that's the one that that. Uh, uh, Devan says, if Crowley is healthy, he should be playing. I mean, I think he's going to play. I just think they're going to kind of ramp him up into this game. And there's right. no, I mean, no need to uh, yeah, no need to rush him in there. No, we, we've seen, if we agree that Master Teague and Trey Sermon have come back slowly from their injury, and uh, Trey Sermon injured his knee the same day Marcus Crowley injured his. Yep. And, and yep. so there's, it's a process for everybody. Nobody just starts out 100 miles an hour. So. I think as quickly as he can, sure, because I want to see him, but I don't think it's going to be game one. And, and I think, there, I mean, there are plenty of people around the program that will tell you that Marcus Crowley could be the best back on this team. And I think there's a possibility that Marcus Crowley is the best back on this team by the time the Michigan game rolls around or the Big Ten Championship game or the playoff. It's just, you, you, you don't take the guy who has not played since the Maryland game last year who had a little bit of a ragged recovery from uh, a knee injury and just throw him out there and give him 30 carries the first game. Like, that's not, that's just not what they're going to do. So, they, they, I, they, I, it may happen at some point, but not today. I, I do think he's like the, a nice combination of the two, of Sermon and Teague, and can do maybe more than, than both of them combined, or do what they do and do combined, yeah. uh, just not right away. Yeah. Right, zip through our questions one more time, see if we got anyone else. Uh, Buzz says Alave and Wilson catch the 50 to 70 yard passes, but the wet ball is harder to catch. Um, yeah, Buzz says we're saving the Ohio State's saving the 100 points game for Michigan. And uh, yeah, that is that is uh, that's true. That yeah, it is it is uh, they are probably both more likely to uh, try it and more likely to do it against Michigan. <laughs> um, Braxton says Ohio State is going to win. Uh, yes, agreed. agreed. I agree. So. 42-20, I believe, is what the score will be. Uh, Jordan asked about thoughts on DeMaria McCall getting more touches. I mean, uh, sure. Uh, I just, I think there's a reason he has not been getting the touches. I think that, that you know, I think I think we've all we've all seen what DeMario McCall can do, but you, just, you you think back to the kickoff, you know, the kickoff against Michigan in 2018, and just you know, just straight up drops the kickoff and, and then Michigan gets a cheapy touchdown before halftime. Like, you just, there, there's just enough inconsistency and it just, it hasn't played out on the field the way you think it should when you see how shifty he is yeah. and how quick he is. Jack of all trades, the Mario of none. Yeah, he's he's just, and he's he's bounced back and forth a little bit between receiver and running back, which hasn't helped. I mean, you just, you, you'd rather see him just in one consistent spot. He's just, he's one of those guys that they, 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 see what he can do they want him to do it it just it hasn't happened yet and yet when we get to see him and he has the ball things happen yeah you know, like in games and, and i think that's a frustrating point for a lot of people who uh, you, you see what he's capable of and it's like well get him the ball board and he'll do more of that but there, i guess there's more to it richard says uh backs press practice against our defense is tough enough for real games i mean they're, but they're not tackling in yeah. practice i mean like they'll they'll tackle Tuesdays. Like Tuesdays, yeah, bloody bloody Tuesdays they'll tackle. They're not tackling on Thursdays. Like you, you might have one day, maybe, maybe two where you're tackling during the week, but but not not a lot. Like this is not this is not the junction boys days anymore. They don't they don't do that. That's that is uh, not considered a best practice anymore. And is that right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, they also let them drink water. It's uh we've come a long way since uh, we are since a very Friday. soft society as we all know today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I, I'm a yes, little chilly actually. Up yeah, here. <laughs> yes, I mean yes, they do practice against the defense. Yes, that should help them get ready. But and, and Crowley has been. I mean, this is this is being asked in conjunction with Crowley being ready to play like in full load today. He's been warming up the last couple of weeks. Like he's been, yeah. he he was out there for warmups every game. He just hasn't been cleared to play. So now he's been cleared to play. But you know, it's just. I, I don't. I don't know if you're coming back from a knee injury. How much is he getting hit in practice? He's probably been in the limited contact jersey until this week, would be my guess. And you know, that's that's the you know Justin Fields talked about going like ten months without getting hit. Like he, he from after the Clemson games, he didn't get hit again until the uh, until the season over against Nebraska. I, I'm going to guess Marcus Crowley's in that boat as well. 
you know, I, I know they like Crowley. I know they think Crowley's a really good player. I think Crowley has a pretty good chance to be an impact player later in the year. If, you ha if you're a running back and you haven't really gotten hit much in the last 10 months, 12 months, because the, the Maryland game was last, what, early November, late October? I mean, it, it was a while ago. Late November. And uh, you know, so it's, been, it's been more than a year since he's probably gotten 54 hit. 54 weeks, I believe, since yeah. uh, since, since, since Yeah, since he's gotten hit in any kind of real uh, real uh, game. So, yeah, I, I think they're just going to be cautious with him. There's no, there's no you know, thief losses, especially when they want to get Sermon and Teague rolling. Won't be encouraging if the running game doesn't assert themselves. I mean, yeah, that, that's a... Uh, that's, you know, they have, they have other options. This is not a desperation situation where they have to throw him in. He may be the best option later. They're just, they're going to, yeah. I just think they're going to ramp it up. I just, he, like I said, he, he may play today. He's just, he's not getting 20 carries today. I just, I don't, I don't see that happening. But I, I've been wrong before. Believe it or not, I have been wrong before. So we'll see. Yeah, that's, we don't have time to get into all of that though. <laughs> So uh, thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. These are fun. We like, like getting to uh, answer your questions. We're going to have uh, a whole bunch of coverage on BuckeyeScoop.com before and during and after the game today. Uh, I am working on a article right now. Well, not right now, but when I go back down there, I'll finish it, on uh, answering all your questions of, like, what's it like to be in Ohio Stadium this year? Like, covering a game. Like, what, what is it actually like in the building? Because I, I have watched the games back on TV, and it just doesn't quite translate. And we had a bunch of questions on the board, too, about just random stuff. Just, uh, you know, hey, are the state troopers on the big towers in the north end of the stadium? Like, how does the, you know, how does the flag get up there uh, during the game? Uh, you know, does the ROTC still put the flag up? All that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll uh, answer all of those. You can, uh, if you go through my Twitter account, at Tom or for. Uh, you can ask those questions there, or you can just, uh, there's a thread on the Buckeye Scoop board, on the Ask the Insiders board, ask them there. I will answer all of those questions in an article, um, and we'll, uh, so that we'll have that coming up before the game. All right, one last question, and then okay. we're really done. Right. Jackson says, predictions for Justin Fields' stats today. I'm thinking, uh, I, I don't know specifically completions and incompletions. I do think you will throw more incompletions than touchdowns. Well, I'm seeing like, you know, 330 yards passing, three or four touchdowns, and, uh, I, you know, 20 yards rushing because there'll be a sack or two. That, that's, that sounds about right. 300, you know, 350 yards passing and 350 yards passing, four touchdowns, and, yeah, like 30 yards rushing and another touchdown on the ground, something like over, that. Over under uh, six and a half incompletions. Under, I think. Under. Five and a half. Under. Wow, Tom. Uh, you you know, are. Yeah. A, yeah big time, yeah, Justin Fields fan. Tw twenty. You know, twenty-two for twenty-seven for three hundred and thirty yeah. yards I mean, that, and four touchdowns. That's like the Justin like, Fields stat line. Right. It's just. It's just like. You know, and if it's. If it's. You know. If he's. If he's throwing. Twenty for thirty. That's like a whoa! What happened? What, what what is going on? And that's a sixty-seven percent completion percentage. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong there. It's just like what what happened? What's what's wrong with it? So. Like, to go with the to get, go back to a guy you hate, JJ Barrett. You're like JJ Barrett, twenty for 30, 300 yards. My God, this is the greatest game he's ever he played. He went off. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it is a uh, it is a different era here in Ohio Stadium uh, this this year with uh, Justin Fields and last year with Justin Fields. Then, and the year uh, before with. Dwayne Haskins. Yes, and in the year before Dwayne Haskins, yes. And in the Michigan game where uh, Dwayne Haskins was also playing and JT Barrett yes. wasn't. Yes, when Ohio State all of a sudden had a passing attack. <laughs> Stop it. Tom. Weird. Uh, ben asked about the impact of the rain. We talked about that a little earlier, but yeah, not, it's, it's, not, it's not a real heavy rain. There's no real wind, so it should be fine. The, the so. problem is that it will only be raining when Ohio State is on offense. <laughs> Like like the, when they used to turn the uh, air conditioner on in the Metrodome yes. when the Twins were batting or the opponent was batting to blow the yeah blow the. I have seen game. games here. One game I don't know if it was like the Tulsa a few years back, but there was a game where it like only rained when Ohio State was on the offense. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they will probably uh, you know I don't know uh, I don't know if Ryan Day has gotten in good with uh, the Jim people Ginnell. the people in charge of the weather. Yes, but uh, if so, if so, I think they'll be okay. So awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it, and. Uh, no, no, Jared, we're not addressing that. Um, we'll, uh, we will uh, be back after the game for our Buckeye Weekly Instant Reaction uh, show. Uh, that'll be probably, we usually try and do that about an hour or so after the game ends, after uh, the pregame or the postgame interviews are over and all of that. So, um, so we'll be back for that. 
and uh, that will do it for the pregame show. We will see you. Enjoy the game. Enjoy uh, Buckeye Scoop. Like I said, we'll have some great content on there today, before the game, during the game, and after the game. So make sure you check all that out. And uh, we will talk to you guys after the game.